It's Opie and Anthony starring little Jimmy Norton. I got a hello from, um, I was in the United Airlines lounge. I had to fly United back to, to Buffalo. And, uh, you know, four-hour delay because the flight was canceled, as opposed to the last flight when they lost my fucking luggage. Great airline. Um, oh. And I see a black man just staring at me, smiling. Uh-oh. And I'm like, uh, you know, did I, did I know you with a wig at one point? Um, <laughs> and uh, it, was Ian, it was Ian Smith. And he's bald now. I didn't oh, recognize him. Oh, fucking Ian Smith. How's he doing? He's living in Chicago now. That's why he hasn't been around. And uh, he says, <laughs> excuse me, he says, uh, <laughs> it overcomes me when I'm kissing sometimes, too. <laughs> he says hello, and uh, he's doing great, and he looked great, and, you know. Was he shaved his head? Yeah, he said Kate Fed's actually a really nice guy. He's like, man, it's amazing what the media tells you, because he's like, the guy's the sweetest guy. Like, he said, uh, you know, the show's he's part going of well. Celebrity Fit Club, this yeah. Kate Fed, right? I bet him. He's a really nice dude. Ian right Smith. on, man. Huh. But, Dr. Ian Smith is a big star now. Yes, he is. He's just a local fucking guy on uh, TV here in New York. Yep. Now, did you step up to him, or did he step up to you? I was sitting there Very in the important. lounge. Yeah. I had a nightmare experience with United again. And uh, Why did they cancel the flight? Mechanical problems. Oh, they, well, they, they, they you told want us them to do that. On the way, Kenny called me. 5.20 LA time. He goes, they canceled. Better on the ground than Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His face. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Rickles' face in Casino when he tells that Japanese guy that the plane's broke. And he goes, better here on the ground than... <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> and points and looks up in the air. Best face ever. <laughs> so they canceled Rickles. my flight. And I, and I go into the first class United Lounge. And it's the International Lounge. And um, so I walk up to the lady after because some guy lets me in. And she's like, well, are you flying international? I'm like, no. And she's like, well, you're not supposed to be in here. I'm like, well, they canceled my flight and wrecked my day by four and a half hours, so I figured they were just being courteous. And she says, we don't use this lounge as an amenity for canceled flights. But I guess since somebody let you in, she was like the cunty lady. How oh, bad did you want to just God. throw hot coffee Dude, in Dude, I, I wanted How to bad. spit in her face. If they would have said, if she would have said to leave, I would, they would have been, been a problem with me at the airport. I, yeah. I was so Aggravated, and you know what? There's nothing special in those fucking lounges to no. begin with. No, maybe a, a chair that you could actually sit on because there's less people. That's about it. Bar. It was a 15 hour travel day because United fucked up. Holy and she shit. had to like fucking rub it in even more. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, it was. I was so. It was. It was like the, the mom in a bad 80s movie. Like I was the kid from across the tracks who wanted to yeah. bang the hot daughter. Right. <laughs> You're not from around here, bub. <laughs> fucking You're the, Laura Dern's parents in mask. <laughs> <laughs> Come, let's go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm mask. She's Laura Dern's parents. <laughs> yes. You said I was Laura right. Dern's parents. Oh well, you could be too. No, I don't. She's the greatest. She's not fun. home, big head. Yeah. <laughs> Mom says I look like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> here he is. Come here, meet my parents. And they're like, oh, Christ, what's this monster walking over here? Oh, shit, that's him. <laughs> Favorite things, the sun on my face. Sun on my face. Things I hate, yeah. the sun in my face. The sun and the darkness in my face because it's so big it covers all time zones. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the sun on the right side and the darkness on the left. <laughs> Eclipse head. <laughs> My whore mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the bikers who molest me after they do crank. <laughs> <laughs> the bikers who do crank and then oh. fuck my face angrily for hours at a time. Oh, look what happened to her crystal meth lined womb. <laughs> that fucking monstrosity oh, came out. Shit. Oh, Rocky Dennis. <laughs> fucking great movie. Try to that sleep. Shit. So, what happened in the international? Is there more to that story? Or that's pretty much no, it. I was, no, no, just, just that she, she was the gatekeeper and didn't want to let you in. Well, <laughs> I was already in, and that's why she didn't ask me to leave. I was really nasty to her, though. I was good, good for really, you. Um, Fuck you. It's like you canceled my flight, mm. and the last flight before that, they fucking lost my luggage. What a shit airline! But at least they had pillows and blankets in first. Continental yanked them. They, they yanked the pillows and blankets from first class. Fucking asshole airlines, man. And, so what, and that's going to make the difference? Make yeah. up the difference? Yeah. It's amazing. We understand they're having a tough time, but how does that make up the difference? Because other airlines did it, so then they did I love it. how they're charging for luggage now. Who doesn't travel with luggage? It should be part of the deal. Yeah. I'm flying somewhere. I bought a ticket on your airline. Can you please take my clothes, too? I'm Mr. Carry-On now, man. Me, too. I am Mr. fucking Carry-On. That's the easiest thing to do. Captain Carry-On. That's but, what they call me. But still, I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. 
It is. It's I, stupid. We just, I always travel with beach balls, so I have to pack them in my suitcase. <laughs> I have sometimes eight to ten beach balls, because I want my room to feel festive when I arrive. <laughs> That'll do it. But it will. How do, as a society, as a society, society, how do we allow this shit to happen? That's what confuses me. Because you got to fly, and they uh, got like control over everything. How are the flights? <laughs> Uh, why did you? Why? Uh, why? Well, why did you have to? <laughs> who, going there. Who had the problem? Everyone. Well, no. I don't know. Just who, who couldn't have some sort of a problem with um, United Airlines? You don't like United? Let me tell you something. On the way there, we took Virgin American. Oh, I, I didn't. We flew Continental. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done the Virgin American uh, with the it, sleeper seats. It's fucking great. It's the only way to it's fucking It's fucking great. First of all, you walk in. <laughs> Holy this, shit. This plane still had like the price tag on it. Really? Brandy new. Brandy new. Brandy new plane. Did you have the sleeper seats? Yes. With the pillows and the blankets. You're in a, your pillows, own pod. Pillows, blankets. It was like, fucking <laughs> fantastic. You wake oh. up and go, what? I'm in Vegas? It was fantastic. I had that and, once. It's And it's you go amazing. in. They got some, <clears throat> some nice music playing. Right. And and the lights over the windows, mm -hmm. like there's a strip where this subdued lighting is in there, was like purplish pink. You feel like you're in a spa. Yes. Ah, everything's just. Ah. And then you know what? You're not sitting in front of a bulkhead either. It's a glass like half wall that looks forward, so you're not like just staring at a wall. Mm -hmm. Personal entertainment systems mm -hmm. for every seat in there, and you know, first class. Thank you. Oh, no wonder. Oh, see? Sam, it you was... didn't fly first class? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I was like, how could they have 20 rows of sleeper seats? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, that's great. A, that's an experience. It really is. And uh, it, it, I, I couldn't have had a, a better flight. The service, fantastic. The flight attendants were, uh, uh, they were good. They were, they were, they were cordial, smiling. Uh then the flight back. <laughs> <laughs> a little different? United slash continental clusterfuck that they put together. Where the second uh, United took over Continental, they did away with those pesky things like pillows, blankets, and any creature comfort you might want on a fucking flight across the country. So, uh... No blankets? No. What's, what's they might about? have them if you ask, but no pillows. Why? Uh, well, they said it was after the swine flu... Or bird flu or whatever for hygiene. This full of shut shit. Shut the fuck up. They just didn't want to deal with they that. They just Lion didn't want to sacks. fucking deal with it. Lion sacks of shit. Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I just start getting an inkling when I walk into the plane and I always kind of look to the left and, and look at the, uh, the flight deck, you know. And I'm seeing instrumentation on there that fucking Lucky Lindy must have used. <laughs> we were on a, an old fucking plane. That's the worst feeling. Old plane. And uh, they always say how flying safe, but you know, let's be honest, the ones that look, do go down, the older the plane, the more it, shit's been replaced on it and fixed and right. everything else. And you know, when you start patching shit together, yeah, uh, yeah, so it was really old. And um, so we 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 take our seats, and I'm looking like, what the fuck is this? Are you in first class? Yeah, I'm right there on and the, row one, so I got the bulkhead seat, which again, Virgin Atlantic. Had a great uh, bulkhead seat. I had no problem with that. There's, it's like, it's, it's like an inch from your face. You're right there with the wall. I couldn't even stretch my legs out. And you're, your legs, you're, you're again, it's, it's, and you're in first class. Look, look, right. I know people are going to be like, aw, 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 but it's, I'm paying for first class. So what, I wanted what I was paying for. So did they uh, just squeeze another first class? Seat I don't there? know what these cocksuckers did. It sounds like did. they should have just got rid of that seat and spread out the rest of first class. Exactly. I don't know what these pigs did, but uh, but uh, you know what? If you're flying first class and you're paying top dollar, you want consistency. The problem I have with first class and airlines is there's no there's no criteria for it. One time you'll pay money, go into first class, you'll have a sleeper seat. Great fucking plane, new equipment. It's it's fantastic. Then you pay the same amount of money. You get a seat that's barely any better than a coach seat. This didn't have a leg thing or any, not even a footrest or anything. It just went back as much as any other seat would go back. And again, 
Look, motherfuckers, I know I'm bitching about first class. I know some of you cocksuckers can't understand. But it sounds like you weren't in a first class seat. Right. It, it, the whole first class so section you kinda was... So you kind of wasted your money there. Was, it was a cushy... It was a cushioned seat. That's pretty much the only difference. The, the problem I had with it is uh, it's just mostly the leg room. Like, the fact that you couldn't stretch your legs so that a bulkhead wall... Um, I used to... I used to no, everyone remembers how I fought for Continental and, like... Oh, I'm telling man. you, they're they're awful. Continental, now. Continental and the customers, the dead. people who work for them, are terrible. Terrible. They're fucking terrible. But you the turn flight us, crews are shit. You turned us all on to Continental. But so just where not, are we going next? They're Jay? just not nice. You fly dude. enough to know. We had uh, every time I fly on, on Continental now. Honestly, every time, even if I don't have the interaction, I watch one of their employees being cunty to someone Whoa. going out. Ant wasn't on the flight going out. We watched, I got yelled at. Uh, we watched a woman. She was working in the lounge area. Uh, she looked like Francine, actually, with more hair. <laughs> and uh, she was just being cunty to customers. And I watched the whole interaction. It wasn't like I walked in on the middle of something. I was watching people from the beginning of their interaction with her. And she was just a fucking bitch. She wasn't pleasant. She wasn't helpful. She was just kind of snapping at people. Uh. So we get on the plane and... Um, I go to the bathroom and I get out and I'm just taking something down. I have a mouth guard I use so I start to sleep. And she, and she happens to be on the plane now for whatever reason. She, and she goes, uh, I need you to sit down so I can close the door. Ugh. And I'm like, I, I made an immediate decision because I mumbled as she walked away. Like, you didn't have to yell, you fucking cunt. And I mumbled it and I didn't say it loud. Because I knew what I wanted to say would have gotten me thrown off the you plane. You get thrown off in a second now. They got you held hostage. But she didn't say, hey, could you please sit here or close the door? I need you to sit so I can... Like she had told me five times. Right. And I had just ignored her. And I'm like, I just watched this fucking bitch being awful to people and rush... It's like, if you don't like your job, and I should take our, our own advice, but it's like, just <laughs> do something else then. Like, don't sit there and attack everybody who's... I watch people asking her legitimate questions. And she's yeah. just a bitch. Just a fucking awful, rotten bitch who didn't want to be dealing with the public, who should, is not good at her job. Who could you complain to? Oh, nobody over there. You can go to their customer service, but they don't care because they're all fellow employees. Right, there we go. You know who I complain to? The people at Virgin American who will get my fucking business any time before fucking United ever gets it. There's no fucking reason. And then I caught shit from the fucking flying waitress uh, uh, on the trip back on the dumb United flight. Mm. Um, uh, uh, you know what? I'm sitting there. It's, uh, you know, me, uh, my girl sitting next to me and stuff. And, and, and we're, we're, we're yapping, you know. And they got that safety thing going on. I know, and I'm not. I'm not being, you know, excessively loud. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know, just kind of talking. Well, that safety thing is garbage. And and everyone is still everyone it. has seen it. Right. Don't garbage. worry about it. Because if a plane's going down, no one's going to remember the safety speech. Yeah, don't worry be about yelling it. Yelling and screaming and trying to save their own lives. I know the any whole way they thing. Can. I know the whole thing by heart. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, she turns to me and goes. She goes. I need you to be quiet for that. And okay, I'm fine with that. I, I didn't even mind that. That wasn't the cunty part. So I'm like, all right, I'm looking, you know, watching it. And then later on, she after it's over, she kneels down next to me and goes, where I'm from, uh, you, you don't mess with the, your uh, waitress or, or bartender. Like, like, hey, I'm not going to get you your shit because you were fucking talking during my presentation holy fuck. She, and she looked You're, like chip the lady yeah she, she really looked like did. chip you're paying oh. for this yeah and i'm paying for it it's first class shit seat and she's giving me crap did she give you your drinks she damn well better have yeah, yeah but she made them wait last before she went to the yes. thing. she just yes. started from the back God. yes she did really wow you showed, yep. you showed him that fucking bitch Yuck. but also i forgot to mention when we were boarding the plane in newark we were going to vegas um I flew first, but, you know, the company flew me first. Um, and Sam, they flew coach. Um, but one of the things is I wanted to bring him on with us because he... Um, well, it's a courtesy. It's a courtesy, and you're you allowed bring, to bring, you bring your, your traveling... with you, right? You're yes. allowed to bring your traveling companion on the plane with you. Right, But right. this way, Sam wouldn't have to wait to put his bags up and stuff. So Anthony Bourdain was actually on the flight. Um, I didn't know until I was on the plane. And he, we were pretending not to notice each other. 
And um, is that true? Of course. Uh, it's why it's by the it, it's. Uh, wait, wait, explain that. Oh, hold on a second. So, okay. so we're getting on the plane, and Bobby, 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 and I were sitting together, and so they had we had Sam come in the line, like, come on with us, and the woman, the woman told, well, we, 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 we don't allow that anymore. That the, the bitch who looks like Francine said, <laughs> we don't allow that anymore. So basically, if you're flying at first, you're not allowed to bring your travel companion on. You're supposed to just leave them out in the lounge. That's just another dumb courtesy but, that but, was nice. But he came on, and so when we were leaving Vegas, oh. I asked the people, can we bring him on? Right. And they're like, yeah, you can still do that. So basically, another example of how that woman in, in Newark just didn't know her job. Didn't know and her just shit. being a bitch. Just being, just being a twat. fucking bitch for no reason. Probably knew her job and, and kind of likes the power thing. But yeah. she lied. She yeah. said that we yeah. weren't allowed to do something we were allowed to do. Well, people lie all the time she in lied. their jobs because they like the power trip. What a bitch. So I didn't know Bourdain was even on the flight, to be honest with you. Uh, he was sitting directly in front of us. I had no idea it was him. Um, I'm surprised by that. And then Your uh, radar is always up for celebrities. <laughs> yeah, but we've. But then I'm going to the bathroom. I saw him look up and then look down real quick. I'm like, oh, okay. So, but people always say to you, why don't you talk to these guys? Why don't you? That's why. He's <laughs> fine. He's a big UFC guy. He, was, he doesn't have any reason to be fucking friendly to me. But not even a, like an acknowledgement that he knew who I was. It's like, I know it. That's why I get pictures with these guys and then fucking ignore them. Because, <laughs> because any interaction you have with them is a fucking lie. It's not a real... <laughs> we, he was on the show. We had a nice time chit-chatting. Right. And uh, again, that's where it ends. Right there. It begins and ends right there. There's no real... Connection being that, made. That's why I look at them... Like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because there yeah. is, like we had a good time, we chit chat. We're promoting his book, and and not even a hey man, how are you? Well, Mark Wahlberg remembered us, and oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> wah, 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 but it's like wah. a little silly thing like that. Like that was just you know what? It, it, that's what it is, right? So uh, we have to interview Bourdain in uh, Comic Con when we go. I think I guess. So bring it up. Of course I will. Maybe he's just shy. Yeah, he's not shy. He's you know please. <laughs> he didn't give a fuck. And that's, again, I don't hate the guy. So what? I didn't say hi either, but I saw I, I consciously saw him look up and act like he didn't. And then look, oh, yeah. oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that was it. And and I, I was able to get Bobby pretty good though on the Continental flight. I asked the um, I asked the stewardess if uh, she had the big seatbelt extenders. Oh. I, I leaned over. I pointed. I go, Bobby. I go, excuse me, excuse me. Do you have, and I pointed at Bobby, I go, oh, do you have the uh, seatbelt extenders? Because I think he need, he goes, I got it. I, I clipped it. <laughs> it's all pissed. <laughs> Bobby is a fucking, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. Like, I, at, the, at the UFC, I was sitting next to him. And uh, I think he thinks he's skinny Bobby because he leans over to talk to you. Now, you got to realize where a head is on someone's body. It's right in the middle. You know, center line. And you got all this other real estate, which is your body. So when you lean over to talk to somebody in your chair and you're leaning your head over, by the time your head gets close enough to the other person's head, your body has been there for a while right. now. You know, he was literally knocking me out of my chair to lean over to, to say lean over something to, to, you. to talk to me. And, and he's 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 just he's a big guy. And, and and he doesn't know his own strength. He was he he tried to tap me, like to say, "Hey, check this out," and it was like I was being backhanded, like a spinning back fist to my chest every like time. Spider Man, yes. So the people that have seen he didn't know his own strength. And he's next to me too. Bobby's between <laughs> me and Aunt. And I have my camera thing on my side, like I always do. So I kept sitting down, and my camera thing on my side was like a gun. Kept bumping into Bobby. He goes, "Dude, you know your camera keeps hitting me." And, and I'm, he's like, you should move it. And I'm like, the camera's not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Anyone else sitting there, there wouldn't be an issue. You're the first person I've ever hit with a camera. What does that tell you? The thing about Bobby, you know, he's easy to goof on. But, man, you go too far, he will knock your head off your fucking yeah, Bob's body. Yeah, fucking psycho. Yes. You know? And you don't really know where that line is. Where the one thing that is going to just make him go, I'm going to now rip your fucking head yeah. off. Yeah. 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 Well, let's. Uh, how was the trip out there? Any any stories? Anything good? Basic. We interviewed. Uh, we got. No, I mean the actual flight. Sometimes that sh shit's good. Oh, no, we we we. Uh, I slept on the plane mostly. I sleep nothing. well during day flights. I don't sleep at night. I'm such a weirdo. I can so, sleep on a plane during a day. So flight. So you got the, out there with no real stories. Nah, nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, uh, Sam, this is your time to shine. What the fuck happened? I wasn't there. Well, I was thinking about the flight out. I don't even really remember it at this point. We've been traveling. Oh, a it was a sh together. another shitty Continental plane. Another shitty oh, United oh, plane. Yeah, no United. TVs. No TVs on the on a, a no direct no TVs at all. No movie at all on a five and a half hour flight. Not even the drop down. No, the, nothing. Nothing. And they put me on it. And, and they put me in first, and uh, it was a shitty, thin seat. That hurt my back, and believe me, I'm not being a twat. Ugh. It's a temporary seat. Yeah, it was oh a horrible, my God. An, another dog shit wow. United flight. And I was complaining on the way home to the people, like uh, the, the, when I was checked in in San Diego to come home a few days later, and they were like, "Yeah, a lot of their planes, like even the people behind the counter knew that the equipment's." It's going to take one of these things to just plow into a fucking mountain because something was fucked up. Well, they're flying ancient machinery. No, this is a new plane that just had temporary cabin. What? It was a new plane that they hadn't put the good cabin oh, in Oh, see, now I sound like a buffoon. No, you don't, but that's what anybody well, would do anyway. They um, got none of their shit together, though, because, like, the plane ride out there, they didn't, their scanners weren't working. Scanners. So we had to, they had to rip the barcodes off our tickets and just yeah. kind of hold them to have record of who got on the flight. Right. Barcodes, is that so your bar don't get cold or something? Code. <laughs> Not coat. Oh, God. Code. Correct me. I'm getting laughs. Did you hear uh, Chip a lot over the weekend? More on this trip than any Ever. other trip, for sure. Wow. But, but so they collected the barcodes, and, uh, and then I got a call on Saturday, because I left Sunday morning, from Kenny, who said, Sam, you're in San Diego, right? I was like, yeah, Kenny, I'm in San Diego. And he was like, because this fucking airline keeps telling me that you didn't get on your flight. And I was like, Kenny, I flew. Wow. yes, I'm here with Jim. We flew down together. They had canceled my return flight. Oh, great. Because they didn't have record of me being on the going flight. But you believe these pieces of shit? Like, say Sam had had an emergency and went out earlier. Who the fuck are they to say when you can you yeah, gotta yeah, take yeah. the return flight? Yeah, just because you didn't take their fucking flight out there, they cancel your flight back. And by the way, I did take their flight yes, out there. Yes, you did. It's because their dumb scanners were broken. Scanners. So scanners. Kenny had to be on the phone with United for an hour trying to convince them to let me back on the flight that I was booked on from the beginning. Oh, wow, man. They are the worst. They're the terrible. Worst. Terrible. Well, who else you fly? Virgin Atlantic, let's, American. Let's Virgin some, Atlantic let's or American. Virgin Atlantic or American. Let's get some solutions yeah. uh, going Delta. here. Delta. They're all shitty, though, dude. Yeah. Honestly. But, uh, what about the JetBlue? United's okay. got it. Yeah, JetBlue. I like the JetBlue. Fine. They, they make it seem like you're having a party in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They keep it a little fun. Free chips. What's that? Free chips. They but, get, uh, uh, the blue boy. ones, right? Jimmy, I, I saw your tweets. You left us on <laughs> Thursday to do the Montreal Comedy Festival. I did, yes. I yeah. want to know, A, how it went. I want to know um, what the fuck happened because you, you weren't able to fly right away. You had a shitty day at the airport. And I, I want to know about your out. wallet, too. I had a 1040 flight. I wanted to get up there early because I was supposed to be shoot. We had a show the night, Thursday night. It was, it was a live event Friday on a Canadian thing called the Movie Network, mm. which is their HBO. And it was going out live. So, How many people, you think? I don't know. There was three thousand in the theater, but Ooh. I mean, no, I how many people watched something? Millions, like that? I guess. I mean, millions. It was, it, was, it was a big show. Wow. Saget hosting. It was a dirty show. Um, myself and again, like I, uh, Amy was on it. Uh, Jimmy Carr, who's a really funny fuck from England. Um, Mike Wilmot, who's a very funny dude, Canadian dude from uh, uh, fucking uh, Canada. England. Yeah, but he lives in England now. <laughs> but there were some really funny people on the show. Uh, and tri uh, Triumph was on it. Um, uh, you know, Smigel. Mm -hmm. It was just a really good show. So f I'm supposed to tape this fucking food show during the day when I get up there. This guy who eats nothing. He's like Sam. He's like a guy who's only eating a few different meals. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they have comedians taking him out for these weird meals. So I get to the airport for a 1040 flight. And uh, the storms are beginning. And uh, mm. I'm at United and Newark Airport. And they say, your flight's canceled. So I'm like, fuck. So uh, she says, the next three flights are canceled. Oof. She goes, but there is an Air Canada flight. Out of LaGuardia at 12.55. And it's like, I have like two hours to make it. So I walk to the Air Canada desk in Newark real quick. Because she hands me this fucking transfer ticket. Because they're, they're both part of the Star Alliance. Which, oh, the Star ooh, Alliance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the Air Canada flights out of Newark are also canceled. Yeah. So I fucking hop in a taxi in a panic. I get to LaGuardia. Turns out this now flight is, is delayed two hours. The one oh. I'm going to. But at least I know I'll make it. Yeah. So I walk up to the desk at Air Canada, and I present them with my ticket, and they say, we're not honoring this. 
Oh. And I say, but, but why? But part of the Star Alliance. I say, you're part of the Star Alliance. <laughs> and uh, they go, well, no, we have to take care of our people first. So I say to the woman behind the counter, well, why would they send me here on a ticket that I can't use? And she says, uh, probably to get rid of you. Oh, man. Wow. That's what the woman working for Air Canada says. She says they do it all the time. She goes, they wanted to get rid of you, so they sent you here. Holy so, fuck. I'm that's, at a point. Uh, where I, that's a huge inconvenience. It's a big idiot. That's not quite uh, customer it's service. A terrible insult. To go from yes, Newark to LaGuardia. Yeah. yeah. At so, that time is a major inconvenience. I'm livid. Yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to get arrested in the airport. Wow. I'm so angry. So I walk over to the United people here in, in, in LaGuardia now. And uh, this because I've gone to LaGuardia. The Air Canada people, they're the only Holy ones that do shit. Montreal flights. She says, all of our flights are sold out until 8.30 tonight. We're taking care of Air Canada people first. You're a United passenger. You're not one of our passengers. So I walk to the United thing. I look into an office. There's one of those doors are open. They're never open. Huh. <clears throat> and I see two guys in ties. Just laughing at their customers. I <laughs> pointing at TVs of, of their customers going, ah, Hanging, look at this yeah, idiot. Out ropes. Yeah. <laughs> so I walk in and I plead my case. And they're, they're sympathetic. Because it's from... They're like, no, no, no. Well, she wouldn't send you. She wouldn't send you to get rid of you. So this guy comes on shift and he walks into the office. They're like, hey, see if you can help this guy. And I guess he's the shift manager for customer service for United at LaGuardia. His name is Sal. White guy, glasses, maybe late 30s, mid 40s. Very nice guy, very helpful. And he tells me the Air Canada people are wrong. He says, this is a confirmed reservation. Uh, I had upgraded to first. Yeah. Uh, with Miles. And he goes, you're supposed to be on this flight. So he marches me back to Air Canada. And he says, this guy is absolutely, it's a confirmed reservation. And they're like, well, he didn't get a ticketed. They're supposed to call over here. And he said, you're part of the Star Alliance. She's like, we're taking care of our passengers. He goes, he is your passenger yes. now. Yes. It's a, t it's, a, it's, it's a perfectly valid reserved seat. And they're going back and forth. Nice. And he goes, I want to speak. To the, I forget what they're called, but it's the, the woman who runs... Mr. Canada. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He said, I want to speak to Air C. <laughs> um, so wow. he gets the head of Air Canada, whoever's on charge of Air Canada at Newark, at, at, at LaGuardia. And, and they have the final say. They're the, the complete boss. They will not honor the ticket. <gasps> wow. So now I'm saying that I have no ticket to Canada. I have no ticket. What 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 did the guy say to you after he, he went goes, to bat for you? not honoring it. I mean, he goes and I said he goes we would help you but everything he goes everything we have is through Air Canada right now oh my and he goes God. everything we have in the Midwest is closed because of the airports. So, so he I, walked away from you? No, like, no, no, no. He stood with me. He was okay, right. This guy Sal was a good dude. He did what he could. Like I knew he tried to help me and he really pushed for me. But it was either that or he had to strangle. He goes simply she's wrong. And she won't oh, take wow. it. So I, I buy a ticket because now I want to just try to go standby. So I spend fifteen hundred dollars for shit. a first class ticket because they say that that class of ticket will help me on standby lists for earlier flights because it's a much higher ticket than most yeah. people have. And so I want to put myself ahead of the list as much as I can. So I spend fifteen hundred dollars. Oh my god. On a ticket. I had a four hundred dollar ticket. Oh my god. Fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> for a fifty eight minute flight. Oh my god. So I go Sal does what he can for me. I go to the uh I get on the standby list, I go, and uh they tell me I'm in the top ten. But of course I don't realize that I'm in the top ten of people who already have later tickets and want to go earlier. That does not help me. When it comes to people who have been what they call, um, not inconvenienced, but people have been displaced, which means their flights have been canceled, they take priority over everyone. So I hear name after name after name. Basically, I hear, uh, could not Jim Norton, not Jim Norton, anyone but Jim Norton, oh, not James no. Norton, not Norton, not Norton, not Jim Norton, not Jim Norton, no Jim Norton. They call 30 people for the 1255 flight, which is now 230. Was it really 30? At least. Holy fuck. I was not one of them. Oh Holy my fuck. God. That I, flight, I'm, I'm livid right yeah, now. Yeah, that yeah. flight comes and goes. I have now a 5.30 flight. No, a 3.30 flight and a 5.30 flight and then my 8.30 flight. Which, of course, I wanted to do my warm-up show. Uh-huh. Uh, which happened at 10 p.m. And I'm like, I'm not going to make my warm-up show at 10 p.m. So the 5.30 flight... Is about five minutes away. I go up to the woman. Wait, you left here at eight thirty in the morning. Yeah. 
Oh, right, ten forty-five. And now, what time is it at the airport? It's uh, oh my God. it's probably, it's going on three thirty now. At one point. Oh my God. And I walk up to the one behind the counter and I say, "Look, they're not treating me like a displaced passenger. I'm a displaced passenger on United." And she was very nice. She goes, yeah, but we have to take care of Air Canada passengers. I'm like, look, they gave me a reservation. Air Canada wouldn't honor it. I bought this J ticket for $1,500 to get on an earlier flight. They're not honoring my ticket, but they're not treating me like a displaced passenger. It's like I'm a platinum flyer on United. And it's like, I know that you have to take care of your other passengers, but if you're part of the Star Alliance, and I'm like, what's the use of having partnerships if you're treated like garbage? Yeah. So right as there, I'm, I'm literally hearing all these names again, and I'm not getting on. And then she looks at me, and she calls, and she waves me, because Mr. Norton, and she brings me up, and I said, I want to hug you. And she goes, we got you on, and she gives me a seat. I'm such an ass. I didn't mean to. I'm like, well, oh, do you have an aisle? And she goes, no, the <laughs> flight. Oh, Jesus. I, I, but I wasn't put, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't believe I just asked that. So I got on the <laughs> flight, and I landed at probably 6 p.m., because the flight was already late to begin with. So I got in at 6 p.m., and uh, that was my travel day. You I, know, I understand why people, and I'm not talking about this Colorado shooter, but when people walk into government offices, now I'm not saying you should do that, but we've all had those frustrating feelings where it's such yeah. a bigger entity than you, and people are like, well, how could they just walk in and start shooting people? Because the way you're treated is like you're facing this faceless <laughs> yeah. organization who has no... Caring about your situation. You can't yes. make an impact on them. I can't help you, sir. That's the way we do it, sir. Sir, I'm sorry. We're sorry for your inconvenience, sir, while you're on the phone. There's not one ounce of humanity mm. or connection from them. And it's the power to destroy your life in the interim here. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're crazy, I can understand Mm. Why you think, again, I'm certainly not encouraging people to do yeah, that. We don't want, we no, 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 don't, but I mean, don't want anyone doing that. people are like, well, how can they realize that they're not realizing they're shooting people? Right. Because they're not uh, treating you like people. They're not <laughs> behaving like individuals or treating you like one. Yeah. It literally is like a fucking robot that is just plugged into human beings and spitting out information to you. Yeah. There's yeah. no way where you can go, no, but this is what happened. And they go, oh. Your, you never hear that during your conversation. Oh, your oh. whole thing on Twitter about United was infuriating me. It was infuriating to read. Well, I got it. I finally did resolve that. Uh, I, I gave a brief synopsis of what they, my flight got canceled. And I'll be very brief with this. That my flight got canceled because of weather, which is understandable. The lady behind the desk at United hands me a ticket for Air Canada, which is their Star Alliance partner. So I go there with a ticket in my hand. She tells me, you give this and you can board the plane. <laughs> I get there. There's no flight for me. They say, we're not honoring this. So the United rep from LaGuardia, after I paid 130 for a cab, is now arguing with the Air Canada people, saying this has to happen. They're saying no. Their highest person there refuses it. Turns out the United lady from Newark should have called Air Canada because within 24 hours, I think the airline has the right to refuse passengers. Oh. Okay. It was a miscommunication. I pay fifteen hundred for a ticket to go eight thirty that night. That's all that's available. So I want United to reimburse me because I paid four forty for my original ticket, mm -hmm. and I want to reimburse me. This is what it cost me to get the ticket. And then United is saying to me this fucking guy in Hawaii, this motherfucker, this customer service rep in Hawaii, is saying to me, "Well, sir, I mean, you didn't. We don't. This cocksucker said monies." He, uh. he, he said to me, we're not responsible for monies spent on other airlines. And I said, I, I understand that if your flight was canceled and I voluntarily went to LaGuardia and couldn't get on. But your lady handed me a ticket and told me it was good. Yeah. So you put me in a position where that was the only flight available. I could have went to JFK and flown American. I could have flown Delta. I could have waited here for a later flight. You did put me in that position. Mm -hmm. He would not bend. So out of $1,500, he wanted to refund my ticket and give me a $300 travel voucher. I said, why do you want me, the customer, to eat hundreds of dollars when a direct mistake by your agent did this? Why would you want me to eat this money? Why would you? Ex How can you, in good conscience, ask me to eat this? It's ridiculous. 
wouldn't bend, and he eventually hung up on me. Oh. So I said, you're, he goes, I'm going to have to terminate this call because I'm a platinum flyer, but I'm not a 1K flyer. And he kept reminding me, I only took this as a courteous, courtesy, sir. I only took this call as a courtesy, which was a way of saying, oh. take what I give you. Yeah, that's not courtesy. When you tell someone it's a courtesy call, it's not courtesy Fuck anymore. This I guy. was so right. aggravated at this guy's smug. And he wasn't rude. Like he, We didn't curse. And I said, so you're going to hang. This is, he, he was on the phone with me for a while. But I said, so you're going to hang up on me? And he goes, yes, I'm going to. I have to terminate this call. I said, I'm not yelling. I'm not being rude. And then click, he hung up on me. And I told him, you're going to lose me over four or 500 bucks, whatever it was. I said, you're Jeez. willing to lose me as a customer. Oh. So I got on Twitter on a rant. And I was like, you know what? Okay, you want to fuck me for 1500 Well, I will simply tell the truth about mm -hmm. what happened. And enough people who have choices... I'm not going to bring down United Airlines, but there are people who go, you know, who do we fly? Uh, you know what? Ah, fuck them. It's going to be more than the money they could have reimbursed you. A lot you. more you're, than the money yeah. they cost get, me. You're going to get your 1500 uh, back easily in another way. Tenfold, because yeah. uh, most people, when they're going somewhere for vacation, will look at uh, airlines are comparable. Do you want to fly mm -hmm. American? I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So that's how you eventually win. And I'm sure a few people will do that for you. But I did speak to another rep from, uh, because I, I called some fan on Twitter sent me contact information for the high up. So I called the office, left a message. Woman called me the next day. And uh, I explained my whole thing to her. And then she was saying to me, well, we didn't twist your arm, sir, and make you. Buy. And I said again, by putting me in that position under the guise of having an airline ticket, you absolutely did twist my arm. Of course you did. And she goes, well, United would have issued you a ticket the next day. And I'm like, but that, I miss why I had to be there. Yes. And I could have gone to another airline. I said, if it's just a flight cancellation, you're right. But you gave me, a, and she goes, well, it's not our responsibility. I said, you gave me a ticket without calling them like you were supposed to do to confirm that it was, in fact, a ticketed reservation. Uh, an actual ticket that you could use. An actual ticket. Right. And she said, well, it's not our responsibility to, to know the policies of our airline. I said, you're saying to me hmm. that as a member of the Star Alliance, you're in business with Air Canada but it's not your responsibility to know their policy. It's mine, the consumer. I'm like, you would have me eat that money Holy when fuck. you, the air, like they were so intent on being right. And then something in our, and again, she wasn't, neither of them were rude to me. I can't say they were. She said to me, uh, uh, hold on a minute. Like she looked at something and she goes, can I call you back? She called me back 15 minutes later. Sir, I went into the records and blah, 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 blah. And I'm sorry. She said, I didn't realize this happened. I forget what, whatever it was, something with the date change. Um, she goes, here's what I'm going to do. They refunded my ticket, blah, 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 and gave me a $900 travel voucher. So I think I was out like 100 bucks. so I was fine with that. She gave me pretty much what I had asked for, which was just to break even. Like, mm. I didn't want anything. I was, this was not a punitive damage. You're not getting thing. a settlement. Yeah, I wasn't saying, because the guy when the guy was saying to me the day before, sir, I'm offering, I'm like, you're not doing me a favor. I'm like, I'm not looking for... Hey, you inconvenienced me. What can I get? I'm like, I'm not trying to do that. Mm -hmm. I just want what you cost hey, me. I just want what's mine. <laughs> just want what's mine. But she actually did the right thing, and so I was fine with that. But when you're dealing with a company like that, like, when I told that guy, I told that guy, I'll go on the air with it, and I, and I won't slander the company. I'll simply tell what happened. Mm -hmm. And I knew he wouldn't care. And that's why I said yeah, it, yeah. because I knew he wouldn't care. They don't give a shit. No, I know. Like, they don't care if they lose you. And uh, this woman did, and she called me back. But when you're dealing with a company like that, now imagine dealing with the government, who's, oh, even, who's yeah. worse than the... Because yes. the airlines can be bent if you, if you call enough people, because but, they but, are more customer service oriented than the government is. What, yeah. I, what I heard in there, unfortunately, is, I mean, good for you, you got a phone number that the average Joe doesn't get. Right. You got to a level where they will get things done. Thanks to the If fans, you could yeah. figure out what that phone number is. Or if you got the inside track like you did. From fair, but, yeah. but the average people that this happens to, you know, the level of phone Nobody numbers course. that you that, that you have at your uh, disposal yeah. isn't going to get much done. I always ask, as soon as I have an issue, I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. Who is the most powerful person there right now? I do it all the time. And they get really insulted. And they try to fight back a little. I'm like, no, I don't want to talk, I don't to, talk you. to you. You're nobody. You're nobody. Who is your superior? Who's your boss? I want to talk to that person immediately. It's amazing how they protect the companies. It's almost like I understand protecting the revenue of the company because it is your job right. and the public are greedy pigs. Like I do get that. 
But the guy the day before acknowledged to me that the agent was wrong not to call over. He goes, but I can't give you the full ticket. I said, mm. by refunding my $400, you're acknowledging mm -hmm. that her mistake makes me entitled to that 400 Why won't you acknowledge that you owe me the money I spent on another ticket to make up for that mistake? Mm -hmm. It was my only up. Why and is then the it next when day, it's their mistake, they can only give you some of it back? That's amazing Why do we me. split the difference it's when amazing. it's your mistake? Uh, yeah. I said to him, would you take less on your check, dude? I'm like, I wasn't even yelling at him. He goes, I can't get in a hypothetical. He was a condescending, smug dude. And the, sad, um, the woman the next day was, was, was much help, more helpful. And the sad part is these people have the same shit happen in their regular lives. As consumers. So they almost should understand. But I think they get yeah, off on it. Yeah, you get shit on, you want I, to shit on somebody yeah, else. Yeah, I think they get off on the fact that it's sort of a power trip. For oh, of course it is. Yeah, it is, yeah. But the government's even worse because the government is unbendable when it comes to that. Yeah. Like, at least this way, they are a customer-based operation. Yeah. So you'll find somebody, if you go a little bit higher, that does care about your satisfaction. I mean, I was going to go all the way up to, to, to Smy, I think his name is Jeff Smyzik, the president, or the vice president, uh, as much as I could have. I, I would have mm -hmm. gotten through to one of them with a, a letter or an email. Right. Eventually they'll hear you. Government doesn't government give a doesn't fuck. Care, yeah. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Plus the fact most people wouldn't uh, uh, continue like you did. Right. You give up uh, along the way because it's just so infuriating. Right. And you're like, you know what? It's not worth me getting sick over. So you fucking go, oh, well. You know, and you drop it. Yeah. It just makes me feel bad, like you said, because I'm lucky. I have a fan base. I can go on Twitter. And people really do help you because people understand the frustration and they understand that just because you do I, I do radio or I'm a, a comic doesn't mean I don't deal with the same bullshit so they want to help and they, it's almost like they want to help because they know when they deal with it nobody helps them yeah. and they, uh, the fans were great man they really did help me a lot and, and I, I know hope, United read those tweets and I hope if we uh, discuss <laughs> it on the show maybe maybe there's a little change maybe it helps someone else down the road who knows who knows uh, Jimmy Norton you uh, just got back from did, uh, yes. California Yes. And uh, you flew the American Airlines. I did. And I read the same United story. I had an issue with them, but nothing oh. like United. Oh, my God. The United thing. What happened? What was your issue with American? Uh, Leno always flies me. They fly me first. And uh, I get mm. to the airport. I'm in the lounge relaxing in gentleman fashion. And they say, well, James Norton, please come uh -oh. to the front. <laughs> I don't like that. So I go up and uh, the woman says, listen, the seat that you're sitting in, we have to inform you, it doesn't recline the footrest doesn't work, and there's no tray. First class. Yeah. The fuck kind of ghetto plane are they putting so you I'm, on? I was really annoyed. I'm like, well, what? what it's happened? unacceptable. And she goes, well, there's something, couple seats in business class, but the business class seats, uh, neither the leg rests aren't working in either one of them either. The two that are available. What the fuck? So I'm like, what's the matter with you people? You're flying old planes. But the woman was so nice. Oh. The customer service was so nice. She's like, we're going to get you a refund. I'm like, I don't care about that. I mean, that's NBC, but fine. I'm like, I just want to get on the plane, miss. I don't want all the yeah. overhead space taken. So she gets me a seat where the, where the actual leg rest works in business. So whatever. It's like, that's luxury problems. So yeah. I'm, I'm sitting in the chair, and it's fine. I'm like, I'm mildly yeah. annoyed at pr on principle, but right, I'm, right. I'm fine. Right. So I'm sitting there before the plane. She walks onto the plane oh. and gives me... Tells me that the receipt has gone through and then hands me a travel voucher for a thousand dollars. Whoa, Jesus. A thousand dollar travel voucher because of the inconvenience of the downgrade. And I was like, I, I want to write a letter because she was so nice. Oh, that's very nice. She was nice to me even I was I, I wanted to be the angry customer so much. Of but I wanted you did. to say, why doesn't what why don't why doesn't United, these shitheads who fight you at every turn, hire someone like this? Who like just because now that the problem has been handled, I feel like okay, I'll fly there, American anytime. There must be a policy in place at United where they, they just suck, don't. Dude. They either don't hire nice people, <laughs> or people are trained when they get a job there to just be fucking scumbags. They're they're horrible That's over at United. Delta Delta is terrible. Still. It's they're Ugh. yeah they're they're Delta still an airline. They're br Christ. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look. We all don't no, have radio or TV shows. Some of us got to fly Delta. I'm flying shit United. <laughs> but here's the thing with that, like that experience you had with a nice lady. Nice lady was. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> nice ass. <laughs> uh, I think, I really think that the um, you you find these like diamonds in the rough uh, in the airline mm. industries, you know, because everybody's such a fucking cunt, and then you find somebody like that, and then you also see these stories of these stewards freaking out and 
dope, saying crazy shit and running off the on planes. The plane, right, yeah. I really think like this industry is starting to implode. It was getting mm. so much pressure and flack from the outside for so long, and now from the inside, they're starting to say, fuck you and mm. fuck this, and it's starting to crumble from the inside now. I really think that's happening. Maybe. I mean, because uh, most of them are shitty and short-tempered and snotty. She was very nice, but the way she, she there's no way she could have authorized that, that type of yeah. travel voucher. Yeah. That was from the airline. It was just, it was like these dummies that run companies, if you handle a problem like that, People, I know there's problems. It happens. Yep. The way you handle it is everything. Mm -hmm. And now I have a good, I have a good feeling about the airline because they were nice to mm -hmm. me right. when they fucked up. Good right. experience. That's all. Yeah. I mean, See? I'm not that irrational. United, I had such oh. an abominable experience with, and I finally got my money back. But uh, just the way they fought me at every fucking turn. Of course, they you do. can't get anybody on the phone. <laughs> Stand them. There, and the story that you're talking about is. Unbelievable! What happened to you? No, no it wasn't Anthony. me. This oh. is uh, this. Well, I just fucking hate United. Uh, they're pricks. They, they, their planes are old. They suck, and they're grouchy people that work there. Can't stand them. Well, this is a story about a, a oh, oh, parent. Good. Couple of parents put their ten-year-old uh, daughter on the plane, and I guess United is uh, supposed to, like any other airline, have some kind of a a person. There's a, there's an actual thing with airlines where if you're flying some kid, uh, they're supposed to have an adult that chaperones the child from the plane through the transfer process and shit like that. She had a connection from yeah, a connecting flight. Where was she going? From where she uh, was, she was Traverse going, City, Michigan, where she was supposed to wind and, up, and she okay. connected in Chicago. Yeah, oh, she yeah. got to the United Hub. She was going yeah. through Chicago. Yes, hub connection. Jesus Christ! And there's supposed to be somebody there to meet. <sighs> Meet the kid right at the plane, take the kid to the other flight, and uh, make sure everything's uh, hunky dory. And the the parents told uh, the kid, "Don't go with anyone unless they have a United badge, and this person will meet you here, and here's everything that's going to happen." Well, there was no one there to meet the kid because oh they because they sub out the work for these chaperones. They're not even United employees. They fucking get some scrubs. I'm sure also. If they took the time to do a background check on these people, they'd find pedos all over the place. That's not true. <laughs> oh, no, Uncle Paul. She was supposed to get on a flight from Michigan, and I said, hello, Phoebe. Phoebe? <laughs> you look like you need a little nap. A nap? So we left the airport. But the plane, it was a connecting flight. The plane was leaving. Nah, I told him she's going to be a little wild. She needs a Bat and a nap. <laughs> a She's bat. tired. You can't. you can't get to camp all cranky. <laughs> so we went to a motel, and I was giving her a bat. Yeah. I was that, washing her. That wouldn't work. The, yeah. the child had to get to a connecting flight. Yeah, I was washing her good. And, and the parents then had no idea. Oh, those busy bodies were very angry. <laughs> Not even a thank you, Paul. She smells good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. You wiped her tears right away. <laughs> no more tears shampoo, yeah. was it? Oh, boy. Not the shampoo sure. making the tears. Sure. <laughs> yes, of course. Hey, thanks, Paul. Look at the little United C donut you gave her. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. I gave her a little donut to sit on so her bottom didn't get sore on the plane. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe. Little Phoebe. Sure. Uh, yeah, the, par the parents then had no idea where their kid was and called United f for an answer was just Put off, put off, put on hold. Like your your fucking kids. Hi, my kids missing. They they sent them first. First they send the, the call over to India to their call center in Jesus India, Christ. like like it's lost luggage or it's like I want a fucking voucher because something happened. No, it's a missing kid, and, and they send it to the call center in India. There are you know people. These big dumb companies are not understanding. How what the beatings and how many people are finding out immediately on social networking? That's the, they're not handling social no. networking well at all. This is the beauty of social networking is, is the fact that now everyone is getting a voice. It's not just you know the people that have radio shows and can say, yeah. "Hey, this company sucks and fuck me over." Now, it, it, as long as it catches on and kind of uh, uh, people can rally around something, 
any 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 old Joe can just get on there and tweet something that something happened and uh, make a big deal of it. If it's a story that feels legit and right. not just some disgruntled idiot complaining, and this one felt legitimate, yep. the progressive insurance the progressive one feels one very legit. Is it's so infuriating? Uh, well, they, we'll wrap this one up. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, they they found their kid. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh, good. They finally. Um, where was the kid? Nah, she was no worse for wear. <laughs> Never mind you. Where was she? <laughs> Never mind you, Joseph. <laughs> they, like your goddamn business. <laughs> the uh, well, because there was no um, the no greeter person forgot there to show up to greet the kid. Uh, <laughs> the kid missed the fucking flight. Missed the, uh, the sure. connecting flight. Yeah. And um, the kid was asking, like, uh, walked up to the counter and said, look, I, I have a connecting flight. I'm supposed to meet. And they were like, all right, just wait. Just wait. And, and missed the connecting flight. Because they're disinterested, shitty yes. employees. And the kid and the parents called the airline airport. And they finally got people on the phone. And then one person goes, well, my shift is ending, so yeah. I have to go. And the, and they finally appeal to the person as a parent, like this is our kid. And, and then fifteen minutes later, they talk. But what fucking pigs! That whole yeah. industry is just filled with disinterested postal employee mentality. Yeah, it's Shit ridiculous. Heads. It's ridiculous. They're they're and, they, yes. and they got you by the balls. I remember, like Air Air Canada can just fucking they're, terrible. I, they're the fucking worst cunts that ever walked terrible. on this earth. And uh, I remember one time I w I was uh, flying Air Canada. And it was the same old fucking horse shit with them. It, everything was late. Nothing was working on oh. time. All this horse shit. And I'm at the counter yelling at the guy going, tell me why we are going to be late and why we're not boarding. And he's going, sir, it's no interest of yours right now. I'm no just telling you. And I go, I go, the fucking plane is oh, out. I see the fucking plane at the gate. Security, security. Exactly. We have a, we have a problem. Security, security. Exactly. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, if you keep it up, we're not going to let you on the plane. And see I had a show do? that night. And it's like, you, I ha you have to they sit there. have you fucked uh, since 9-11. They've taken what is supposed to be security and uh, your own safety and things like that and perverted it into this ultimate power trip where a scumbag scrub employee now has the power to fuck your life over if you, uh, if you get them a little annoyed. They're fucking scumbags. They should be ashamed of themselves what they did after 9-11. They got free money. They got fucking sympathy. Oh, yeah. They took it, and they used it as a way to further hustle the public. To further They're fuck fucking everybody disgusting over. people. Yeah. They all have this attitude... Every airline employee has the same attitude of like of like a fucking pothead sound man at a music club. Like, hey man, <laughs> that's great. No yes. worries, man. We'll get there when we get there. And it's like, no, I got shit to do. You fucking cocksucker. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. That's why man. I'm flying and not taking a Conestoga wagon. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I hate it, dude. I wish the whole industry would collapse. I I wouldn't give a fuck if I could never fly anywhere for the rest of my life. No. Let it fucking collapse. None of them. The problem is like when this woman at American came on the plane. And gave me that voucher. It was like she was just being nice. Mm. The the nice part of that was like I fly so much. I see so much shit behavior by these people. The fact that somebody went out of their way to acknowledge, like, yeah, the airline screwed up, and here's something nice. Mm -hmm. It's like that. That should be commonplace, right? Yes. The, the, the public is un, uh, is fucking unbearable too. Because we, I mean, the, the the airline deals with the same shitheads All that right. we deal with, and audiences who were going like, I was just laughing when they oh, were talking. Okay. Right. So the, the airline has to deal with people trying to dope fiend them for free shit. Uh, but they, they don't seem to know the difference between no. when they're legitimately at fault and when someone's being a cocksucker passenger. They've taken away every bit of uh, comfort uh, and and just customer service. Anything that is supposed to be there when you're you're taking people's money and supposed to give them a service is now just gone. They're doing you a fucking favor that's now. Why, that's why I think that when somebody does a gesture like they did for you thousand dollar travel voucher i really think that's somebody going i'm gonna fucking fuck this fucking airline these cunts and, Maybe, and, yeah. and they and they do something and they go what are you gonna do and uh i had a guy once i went to the wrong airport in the morning and you know that like the, the worst Jesus. feeling ever my stomach just sank I was pulling up to the airport, and I was like, I need to be in Newark, and I'm at JFK. I fucked up. I just fucked up. Oh, uh, yeah, it was like spaced out, right? Yeah, it was the worst. You know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to make my gig. Like, I was freaking out. Oof. 
And I went into the guy and I just go, I go, please, dude. I just go, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. I need your sympathy. And he started laughing. He goes, dude, just pay me fifty bucks. We'll get you on this plane. Don't worry about it. Oh shit! You gave him fifty bucks. Yeah, I mean, like. It, it was a fee. It wasn't like oh, I slipped I thought, him. I thought he was like, <laughs> no. hey, dude, 50 bucks. I get you on a fucking plane. No, but on the 100 bucks, I'll take as much cocaine <laughs> as you want me to. Right. <laughs> yeah, but like on the phone when I called, they were going, okay, it's going to be $150 change fee. You're going to pay the flight difference. I'm like, this is going to cost you like $700. Are you joking oh, right now? Like, you have seats available. And they go, just talk to the guy at the desk. So when I got there, the guy at the desk goes, all you got to do is pay 50 bucks and we'll fix it. That's pretty goddamn was, good. You were you know, fucked. What airline was it? I think that was Delta. And I've been in screaming matches with Delta. Whoa. Screaming matches, trying to get out of flights because somebody died and they're going, we need to see a death certificate oh, and all this geez. shit. Like, yeah. sc- I know, dude. Like, It's literally like <laughs> fucking Rooney and uh, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> yeah. you roll our old bones in here. We'll, <laughs> we'll change your flight. And I, like just screaming at them, and I was like, "There's no." Fu-. And I went into it like you said, like ready to be angry, <laughs> even though it was my fault. Yeah. And this fucking angel of a man was yeah. like, I'll, "I'll help you." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what you need once in a while. Somebody just to be reasonable and nice with you, and when they don't deal with you like people, yeah, I'm telling you, that's why people snap so much. Yes. At work at the post office because you're a number. You're not being treated like a person. Yeah. And it's like, and I'm not justifying these mentally ill fucking waste, but you do understand how people at least throw punches at people, like, yep. and fucking drill an airline employee in the fucking face. Well, I, I do not like the idea that uh, in the airline industry, you can't voice a complaint um, there at the airport without coming off like you're a fucking terrorist. You're, you're fucking, they, they always pull that, hey, you want to fucking, you know, you want to get on this plane? Hey, uh, you want me to take you off this plane? You want me to? Ta- it's like really, you, really. We've gotten down to where if I have a problem, you're gonna threaten the the flight. You're gonna threaten my fucking transportation. It's, that they're, I'm they're, paying for. They're, they're scumbags. They're Twitter's sc- the best weapon. It, it sounds like it's not, but they do notice that shit. Um, and when they see seventy or a hundred or two hundred bad, mm. it, they will they will address you. Like they will address you. Yeah. It's like it, they can't not, and they do. So I think that they don't know how to deal with the social networking. And and it's like, it does help people not get fucked by companies. Because yeah. airlines are just these, they don't care. I told this, this fucking scumbag from Hawaii. He was told me where he was from. Mm-hmm. I'm like, because it was, it was, it was I'm, I went through the story already, but I'm like, you're going to lose me for good on United. I told him, you're going to lose me as a customer over what I was saying was 400 bucks. I'm like, you want me to eat that and not the airline? Well, sir, we don't tell you what monies to spend. This monies. scumbag. He said monies. He said monies. Ugh. This scumbag was going to just let me walk for 400 because he doesn't give a fuck. But he you attacked care. him on Twitter hard enough. And then all of a sudden they see it and they do address you. And they do yeah. address you. Dude, yeah, they're, they're, United is bad. In fact, I bought it when my mom got sick. I had two tickets. I had two gigs I had to cancel. So I had two tickets that were non-refundable. And Delta, I believe, were they were like, look, just well, it's okay. Like, just take the money and, you know, you got a voucher. Don't worry mm. about it. United, I sent them this long email saying I can provide medical records, whatever, and they never even responded to me. Well, they just never responded. That's their terrible. So they're I just ate the ticket. Customer care department. Oh, the best way to do it is to write an email and CC the top officers. Because now that you don't... I, the first time I ever did this, I was writing letters. And I was actually mailed out 15 letters that I demanded a receipt of signature for. The oh, Continental Jesus. fucked me one time so bad. <laughs> You're hilarious. I was so aggravated. I, I did that, and I got a, they changed company policy. Wow. But uh, you got to CC the top officers, because then the other people below them see that these guys have been uh, CC'd. Mm. And they might come and go, what's being done about this? Because once in a while, you'll get like one of the top three or four or five people in the company. Yeah, yeah. If they see a complaint, they do care because they're not the scrubs. They don't deal with the, it's not, Jeff Smizek at fucking United doesn't deal with these things. I love that you know his name. His oh, name I know. Hell yeah. He was the Continental And CEO. he probably knows Jimmy's right. By this, this time, point, yeah. yeah. But I mean, that guy does not deal with the day-to-day bullshit. So when something passes his eyes and he gets and he looks at it, he may go. What, uh, what's what is this? Yeah. Right. So who, then they have the to cut assholes it. dealing with this fucking problem. That happened a few weeks ago with Aetna. Somebody tweeted the CEO of of Aetna. Well, he was just you know 
saying at Aetna, um, about how, you know, he, he's, he's got cancer and he's got millions of dollars in, in bills and his, his health insurance isn't going to cover it up to a certain point. And the CEO read his tweets and he said, we're going to take care of you. We're going to cover all of your all of your expenses because the health insurance system is is broken and this shouldn't be happening to you. And we're going to help you out. Wow. So, yeah, you're right. Like, like, you know, the, if you if if the right person, see the guy up top sees it, you know, and, and if you, and if enough people, I mean, that's where we're lucky where we have more followers and we're able to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I, do you always fly first class. Do yeah, you, by, by by getting bumped up or in the contract. I know not with Leno. I mean club gigs. Uh, when I'm paying for it, I'll either upgrade with miles, I'll fly on miles, or I'll pay for it. But I pay for very few flights overall, so it's yeah. worth it to me. Hmm. It's a write off. But I, like, it's almost impossible to get bumped up now. Yeah, that's why I, I United that it's, merger, oh, that oh, fucking me... airline sucks my dick. Oh, I got it. Continental you. was pretty good. Yeah, United is. Fucking! What's wrong? Te- they're just terrible. I've, fl- they're, I've flown United a bunch of times. My there, miles are really expiring. Continental oh, miles never did. Oh, they're okay. just. What do you mean expiring? They're just. <laughs> if you don't use them, they're expiring. What do you no, mean? In, in mid-use, they actually kick you off the plane. <laughs> They'll only fly you halfway to LA. They boot you out over Minneapolis. Well, how could they expire your miles? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Mm. They're, ter- they're absolutely terrible. Let me tell you about those scumbags, United. I had a pair. But where? Uh, who else could you fly? We're I, running I, out of right. options. I American know. or Delta? I've been flying. We're how, running out of options. Do you here. know how bad you have to fuck up to, to, to lose me as that airline? How loyal I was yeah. for years. Loyal. You got us all involved. I got him yeah. involved I didn't in give Continental. A f- no, I didn't give a fuck involved. about flying until Jimmy started telling us. Now we all do what you do. They don't I, care. I When I flew, I had those uh, sunglasses you told me, the Maui Jacks that were like 300. You got them. So, no, not anymore. They were stolen out of my golf bag along with another thing, a I harness. Think you told the story already. No, I didn't tell the story. I think but, Bonnie told us. No, but here's the thing. Maybe I did. I don't know. All I know is I'm not getting the money back, but they caught the TSA agents in Newark that were stealing the stuff. Okay? TNB? What's that? TSA? Yeah, TSA. Yeah. They caught them. <laughs> they caught them. Sneaky. But yet my stuff was that stolen. Sneaky. And. But it's United. Hold on. If it's a TSA agent and uh-huh. not a United employee, wouldn't that be the TSA? No, you have I, who, to I handed my bags to United. I didn't hand them to TSA. Point I, being, that's you, true. you wanted your glasses back. Say, hey, you yeah, know who, just, who just, stole them, so give them back. Do they, do they I, find I, they they approve that he took your stuff, or they just know an agent was stealing? An agent was stealing. Same thing happened in Miami. I had stuff stolen in Miami, and then. Two months later, I read Miami TSA agent arrested for stealing electronics and stuff. So what are they? What's their response? No, we don't cover sunglasses. We don't cover just a list of things they don't cover. It's all know. the stuff they steal. It's yeah. It's in like if you <laughs> and that's why they this, steal it yeah. exactly. You know, so they don't cover it. So you basically, yeah. when, if you have something stolen, like they don't cover electronics. So if you have something electronics stolen out of your suitcase, you better say pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and these are the people. <laughs> what? Just a mid-story cough. Oh, sorry. <coughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just. It's furious. It is. Kind of, it's furious. It is. It is furious. Yeah. Just, fu- you know. But you know, Southwest, you want to fly them, but you're scared. Now why would you? Want because to fly? they're they're they don't have a hub, so it's like you they're, know, how do they work on a, they they land and go, hey, does anybody have a hammer we could borrow, or you know, <laughs> we got to work on the plane? Do any of <laughs> you guys have a lift that we could use? Because they have, where do they work on their planes? They don't yeah, have a hub. I'm not even going to deal with that airline. South, Southwest. Remember the old days with the new airlines, and you go to this weird part of the airport that they just oh, kind of yeah, set they, up a makeshift place to yeah. to you know check in. Oh, like I what the fuck. Am I flying? I love walking down yeah, memory lane with you. in the food court. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I used to, People's Express used to pay, pay on the plane. People's uh, Express. So I, like, I remember I people doing, I was doing drugs, and I had no, I'd get on the plane with no money, because I did. I'm going to make believe I've never heard the story before. Did I tell it? I, I actually I don't know the story. <laughs> huh? I don't know I'm the story. sorry. No, I don't know the story. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'll make believe I don't watch you in your nose half the show. <laughs> 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 okay. All right.
right. You know you're gonna get. Oh you know God. you're gonna get a beating back if you go after Rich. But you have to. But you no, have to because he is a quick here's motherfucker. The thing, no, you tell got the people so many story new again. Li- listeners, dude, I it was a joke. What we were just joking the other day. Yeah. We tell the same five stories a million times. Oh, what? No, what so we do the same shit. I just didn't have any money, and I would because I do it on spend on drugs. Then I would call the club owner and say, "Meet me at the airline and pay for my ticket," because they would come down the aisle. To collect the money and you go, oh, I forgot my wallet or it was something. It the weirdest thing. No though. ID you didn't need it back then? Wow. No, man. I would I would fly to, I guess, Buffalo at the time on People's <sighs> Airline. It was the weirdest thing. You actually paid on the plane. <laughs> like- hey, Rich, I found your wallet. You must have left it over my house. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that's con- Continental bought People's. They did. Yeah, that's who Continental took over. People. And Boy. it was cheap, too. How much was a flight? Like, there were flights for $19. Yeah, yeah. 19 to, like, Buffalo or Boston. Wow, that's Yeah, crazy. that's about right. 19 bucks. There was it some for 20 Way less than 100 I remember that. And United is so... This merger makes me it's fucking sick. It's not a merger. It's a takeover. Yeah. Because I, so many Continental Sirius employees got fired. XM. Terrible. They say merger. Yeah, it is. Like, cool. the XM serious oh, merger. And meanwhile... Yeah. Hang we're the last bastion of XM left. I don't see an XM sign anywhere. Oh, no. They would them. love to just chop the XM off the Sirius XM yeah. logo. Oh, I do see it. Really brilliant on their part. And they... Um, Good move. Rid of all the creative people. That's smart. That was the fantastic they, management. Ted XM was fucking... Well, the management sucked, but there was some fucking creativity pussies. over there. How do you lose... Sirius didn't acknowledge. Yeah. The so giant... Everybody. The giant lead. One Financial guy. lead. Technological lead. It's amazing. Subscription lead. Does maybe four shows a fucking month while everyone else suffers. It's and amazing. Ha- haven't had a raise in years. <laughs> what, What's up, Rich? <laughs> what happened? Poor Sam. Hello. What happened? He's the only one who still has hopes and dreams. And Sam? Yeah, that yeah. shit will go we'll away. Him. He's got that youth and <laughs> things are going to get 30. better. 30. What youth? <laughs> youth. He hit 30 and look, he's slumping already. Yeah. You're 30? 29. Exactly. That's 30. That's 30. Yeah, it's not as optimistic. He's got to work hard. <laughs> he's got to work hard and hope because he's got a girl that's out of his league. So yeah. he's got to fucking, you know, he's got that going for him, which means things which like nice. fucking house and everything else. So, you know, he's fucked. He knows it. He's yeah. fucked. 